Hi, you're welcome back to this section. I want to quickly walk you through on how to create or manage business plan on NYSA platform. Because NYSA has a customized way you need to enter your business plan for it to be acceptable and for you to be able to gain that uh, loan. Because if you do not meet with the criteria, there is no way you will be able to assess the loan. Now, we're going to start with the step three. On that loan application, you have six steps. You have step one, step two, step three. The step three is what takes us to the aspect of the business plan. And that is what is very referred to as the blink plan. And for you to be able to get into the blink plan, you need to pay a sum of 4,000 Naira. You do it online. Once you click on it, there will be a pop-up that will request you to make payment. So you can make payments using your debit card, following the information there. Without paying that 4,000 Naira, you will not be able to assess the business plan templates for you to enter. This has nothing to do with the EDI. This is between you and the NYSA platform. But however, we're going to walk you through on how to do this. So when you make your payment, it will pop up a process for you that you will be able to create your business plan. In this case, you are seeing here, continue to my business plan. The aspect I've used here is somebody's own data and the person have already started working and log out. So coming back, it will tell you, create, uh, continue your business plan. But if you are coming in for the first time, what you will see is create business plan. So you will now click on create your business plan. And once you do that, it brings up this environment for you. And if you are already in there, you'll be working before. That is where you see your business plan status, whether complete, incomplete, and you can always come back anytime. So here you have here, manage your business plan preview your business plan, report issues, then contact support. So in the process while you are working, if you have any issue, there are technical support through the NYSA that you can contact and they will attend to you. You can review your business plan and you can manage your business plan. So in this case, you have come in, you have made your payment and you are now in the blink plan. So you have to work on your business plan to create your business plan. So Click on create your business plan. It brings you to this environment. And here you have the blink plan and you have steps that you're going to walk through. And you have step one down to about 14 steps you're going to walk through. Like here again, you are seeing continue business plan because this person's self information that I'm using has already entered the into constructed the business plan. Hence, you are if not to be create business plan. And here, once you have finished working and you've created, you can always preview your business plan. You can preview your financial model. At the same time, you can download and you can download your business plan and your financial model. So in this case, we're going to continue. You click on your create business plan. And if you have been working and you come back, you click on uh, continue with your business plan. So if you click on that, the first thing you go, you are going to have your business information. Now, because you have made your payment, it gives you opportunity to have your business information. And at the same time, the EDI would have entered your certificate code because without your certificate code, you will not be able to have access to work between the uh, step two to six, like I said in my previous uh, video. So here, you always have a guide. You always see a blue uh, part here with a blue button. So you are required to provide relevant information that truly describe your business enterprise in this session. Please note that the uh, red, randomly uh, filled are data entered by your training institution from the loan application form. These ones that are readable, that you cannot uh, change, they have been entered by, you see here, your business plan right up. This one, they are custom. You can't change anything here. But when it come here, they need your business address, your business email, your business phone number, 
your website address if you have if you don't have you leave it you see there are particular ones that are required that are very important these are these one stars in red you must provide them those ones are compulsory you can't leave it out but the ones that are not in red if you don't have it you leave it like for example you have here your company bank name company bank account number whereby you will not have a different account from your personal account you use your personal account but it is always good if you have your company bank account details if you don't have you could open one specifically for your business now you come here your business status here you have a there is a drop down menu you always see one small button here if you click on it it gives you more information to select from then here you have a setup if you click on it it gives you more information to se select from and the business startup too if you click on it it gives you more information to uh, select from so here you have your year of operation then your business uh, ownership type always use this drop down button and make your selection if you click on each of the drop down button it will give you a place to select from then other information that will be required is your vision statement your mission statement you see your vision is quite uh wide you have a very wide vision concerning your business there must be a vision for your business and the mission is how are you going to meet that your vision so you, the process of which you will use to get to the vision so first and foremost for you to be able to carve out your vision you have to see that visualize who, what the purpose that of your business what do you want to cover what are you really going into then you now look at it don't make it look at something that is real that you really want to achieve something that will drive you that will push you to achieve what you need to achieve because while you are working there will always be some kind of stumbling block on the way but if your vision is right that vision acts as a drive for you then your mission will help you meet your vision so in your mission statement there must be things that will describe how you are going to meet that vision you have set. Then you have the value proposition. There must be value that you are giving to your vision and your mission statement. Then you have your business description, which will not really be much. You just describe what your business is all about. Then your business objective. What is it that your business want to achieve? You have to state it clearly. What is the disease that your business want to achieve? If, for example, okay, a lot of persons wants to go into poultry. Why are you going into poultry? Why do you want to go into poultry products? Or what is it that you want to really go into? Some are, okay, you are interested in production of air. Some are not interested in production of air, but the field. So there must be objective that you want to meet. What is that? There must be added value that you want to bring in. And that value and your objective work hand in hand. So if you have a clear value, your clear value we help you derive a clear objective that you need to meet. So once that is done, you now click on save business information and you go to the next one. And the next one, which is uh, the next, you have a uh, step three here. It gives you the equipment needed. Under this equipment needed, please, you have to remember that with NYSA, they're going to give 70% of the loan you are applying for it will be approved for equipment. Only 30% goes to capital. So don't be carried away that you're going to put your capital, working capital, make it higher than the equipment, no. So here, if you get into the floor, you will equally give you a guide. So this is the equipment list. And you will see something like this that is plain when you come in for the first time. It will just be plain. And other here, there are things that are required that you need to see. And what is it? Click on this ad. If you can see this ad button here, you see ad. If you click on it, it will bring out a dialog box that will give you a description of model, user, quantity that you need to fill in. And this is the box. So you will have this kind of box. You see equipment list description. What is the equipment? Describe it. For example, some people will say fridge. There are different kind of fridges. What type of fridge? Is it deep freezer? And if it is deep freezer, what kind of deep freezer are you? Is it Tamoku? Is it, uh, there are so many brands you have there. So put it there. And even these days, you have the ones that are 
uh, you use that have less energy consumption. Then put the model. Maybe the model here now, you are putting it LG. That is what you want. Use it. What are you going to use it for? Describe it. How many do you need quantity? Put it here. What is the unit price? How much does one cost? Once you put it here, automatically here we sum up and you click save. And it will run through all of them. Then you go back again for another equipment, you click. And before you start working on this, I want to advise that you sit down, list out all the equipment that you really need in that particular business you want to uh, set up in which you are applying loan for. And ensure that the equipment are scrutinized and there are things that you really need. So you now go to the next one, we have the working capital. Under the working capital, which is sub uh, four, here again, it goes in the same process. You always have a template in case you are getting confused. You don't, okay, I don't even know what working capital represents and what I need to add. Here it said, you are required to provide detailed information about the working capital required to perform your business operations. Now list out each working capital item, provide the category quantity required and the current market price. So working capital, this is your operating expenses that you're going to be using from time to time, from day to day. And if you are confused, you don't know how to generate, you can just click on this while you are filling it. But however, when you are talking about working capital, think of what you need from time to time. So you come here again, you can see the add button. If you click on add, it will give you a dialog box like this, where you're going to enter your working capital. So describe the working capital. Stay the category. Here we have a drop down bo a button here. Click on the drop down button to give you the category. Then you have the quantity, how many, put in the amount and you click save. And once you click save, then you gives you more information. Now, this is the category. You see the category rent of office, lease of land. This is what's supposed to be here. If you click on this, this is what it will give you. You see the categories, the equipment renter. So if you describe your working capital here, because you need this, you're going to be using it. For example, maybe you need a shop and the shop lease of land or rent of office. That is the category. So you put it here. How many offices you put it here? How much does it cost? You put it here. So when that is done, you click your save and you move on to the next one. Here is an example of already filled equipment form. You see, this person has already filled this. Here, the person has a salary. If that is the description he has. But I think this is not really equipment per se. This person is making some errors. So do not make this, you have to be very sure of your equipment. Now, after you feel if there is any adjustment you need to make, you can come here. Can you see this icon here? You click on this icon that looks like a pencil. It will help you to edit. If you don't need it anymore, click on this icon to your right and it will delete it and you'll be able to replace what you needed to do. Now, let's look at the fifth one, other loan information. Under loan information, there is a description here. Say you are required to provide relevant information about your loan details, like referees, a repayment date, and all this. So what do you need to do? You see, all this place has been blocked out because you can't touch this. So month of repayment of loan, there is a tenure that you need to do. You have a moratorium. Moratorium is between six, to, uh, six months to one year, so 12 months, and you have to think of what time frame is NISA giving? I think between five to seven years. So you have to calculate the number of months you want to pay back the loan. Then you have your name of referee here, the first referee number, the first referee address, and the second referee. So you have to provide two referees. You fill in the details. Now, once that is done, you come to the business status. On that business status, you have to receive loan from the bank before. It's asking you if you have received any loan from the bank before, then you have to fill this. You can't go away with it. If you have received loan from the bank and you say, no, you have not, they will surely discover it. So it's better for you provide the right information. Say funding institution, that means the loan where you, the bank where you got it from, put it here, the loan amount, put it here, the interest rate, put it here. Then termination date, when is it ending? 
put it. And if it has ended, still put the date that it ended. It will help them to process your information. Then you now say save loan information. Now, the sixth one is the SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis is quite um, a, it's a requirement. We really need it to help you process what you need to do. And in this regard, we have them, if you have the strength, you have the weakness, you have the opportunity, you have the strength. First and foremost, you need to think about what are the strengths that you have that will drive your business? What are the weaknesses that are likely to affect your business? Then what are the opportunity outside there? Because if you're talking about strengths and weaknesses, it has to do with what you can provide. You have control over them precisely. But when you are now looking at the opportunities and threats, this has to be external. So why strengths and weaknesses are internal within your business, the opportunity and threats are external. So if we're looking at the strengths, look at the strength that of what you can have in your business. For example, may let's assume you already have a building and you want to set up a particular a business that requires building. That building is a strength for you because you won't need to go and buy it again. And maybe also you may have opportunity that you have a big land and you want to go into farming. So that is your strength. You have that. And maybe also you have you have the knowledge of how to manage one. You've done it before. It's your strength. Then you have to look at the weakness. What are those weaknesses that you feel it will affect your business? You are looking at the business aspect. You identify them. Before you start feeling, identify them. Write them out. Brainstorm on them. Sleep over them. Then you now come to the opportunity. Opportunity are those advantages that your business can attract from outside, outside your own uh, business. As are your own business now. For example, if you are going to go into maybe vegetable production in a city and in an urban area that is highly uh, populated, whereby you don't even have space for farming, no land and the rest. But right here, you are able to use uh, a modern system of farming and you are providing fresh vegetables around. So the opportunity you will have is that you're going to have a lot of customers who will actually patronize your product for the worth of the value of that your product. But what could be the threat? If you remember, there are times when we are planning on businesses. So when you are going into business, you have to think of the threat that may come. Sometimes it may even be some policies that may affect your business. Like some if your kind of business has to do with importing some materials or partly of the materials you need in your business, and suddenly there is a policy that is a change in the exchange rate, definitely it's a threat and that could affect you. So you have to identify things that could affect your business. And when this is known, you now enter them into this place. And this you can verify at the EDI center if you work out. So when it is done, you just say safe SWOT analysis and you move on. So the seventh one is the product and service. So under the product and service, always make reference to this place because there's always a guide here. What is the guide saying? He said, you are required to provide detailed information about your product or service. But remember, when you are applying for loan, your loan may be for product, may be for service. There are some people that the loan they are applying for is to provide service and not to produce products. So here, indicate the category of product or service, provide the quantity then uh, of products that you want to produce monthly and the like, then also provide the cost. So if you're getting confused, you feel like, oh, I want to refresh and be sure, just click on this, you get it. But however, what do you do? Just like we have done in the other ones, just click on add. When you click on add, it's going to give you a dialogue box. Like this once you are seeing, the person have already added it. Here it said description of dried fish. Here, table size catfish. So, well, that is for this person is trying to look at the product. The product is going into is a dried fish. And again, you look at table water. So here you must be very specific of the type of product you want to go into. So if I click on add, it's going to give me this. So you see product and service. So describe the product here. Then the cost price of that product. How much will you sell it? Put it here. Monthly production uh, you want to uh, have. The direct labor uh, percent. 
that you are going to put on this monthly production capital. Then material use, the percentage of it, you have to put it here. Here you're going to select the line type. When you click, you see the line type. Now, let me quickly say something in this uh, regard. When you want to get to this level, don't be so much in a haste to fill in anything. It is always good to carry out a kind of market research. Because if you have not been into the business, then it's more challenging. What I will advise you do is, first and foremost, you go out there, look for similar businesses and find out how much each of these things cost. Because if you do not have idea of how much these things are sold, sometimes you may just be in your room there, right on your table, and you will think, oh, everything is going to be rosy. You put high amount and on the long run, it may not really end that way. You can go online and Google and find out how much, because you always have a similar product, even if it's not exactly the same, there will always be something close to the product or service that you want to provide. So I advise you go online, Google and map out all the amount and the variation, the cost price, the sales price, and that will help you take a decision on your own pricing. Now, who are your competitors? Because that is the eighth part we need to fill. You need to know your competitors and who are your competitors. Now, there are competitors that are of different categories. There are competitors that might not necessarily be on the same line of business with you. There are competitors that are on the same line of business with you. For example, for somebody that is selling Gary and another person is selling rice, yes, you could say that they could be competing with each other because if the price of rice is high, I can decide to go for Gary, fine. But in this case, you must look for competitors that are in the same line of products with you or service with you. Yes, you are selling Gary. Who are those competitors so that are into Gary production? Because they are your true competitors. They are into Gary production. If I want to go uh, leave rice for Gary, plantain for Gary, but there are other Gary, what will make the consumers to leave the other Gary and come to your Gary? So that is why you have to look keenly to the competitors that are in the same line of production or service with you. And what is it that is reserved? You are required to provide detailed information about your direct and indirect competitors. Because you have the direct competitors. Those are the ones that are in the same line of production. The indirect, they are mostly not in the same, but they are in the complementary aspect. Like I use rice and gari, they are indirect competitors. But for those that are directly in gari production, and you are in gari production, they are your direct competitors. So list out their product that competes with your product and indicate the prices of competing products and services. So this is what you will get when it comes up. You will see this. What do you do again? You click on add. When you click on add, it's going to give you this box. You see, competitor analysis. Here, it gives you opportunity to select your line type, then the product, you put it there, the competitor product, put it here, the competitor organization put it here, home sale price. You must go and find out how much those how much they are selling their product or how much they are rendering their services. Because that is what will help you to determine how you're going to grade yours. Now, again, you come in here. If you click on the type of competitor's line type, you have product or service. So you pick any of them, either product or service. So when you are done, you click save. And you come back again, you click add because you may have so many competitors. Think about all the competitors you have. You click add. Like this person, the line type is product. The home uh, product is a dried fish. Competitors, products, dried fish. So you discover that this person is into dried fish and the direct competitor too is into dried fish. So you need to bring in everything. And on your own, when you're able to get all this, it will help you to even think and know whether the business you even want to start is viable in that instance. So now we go to the business asset. Under the business asset, again, let's read what is being given to us. You are required to provide detailed information about the asset you, you have for your business to perform your business operation. List out the assets. These are assets you already have in the business. For example, I did mention house. You have a house. Maybe you have a drone. You have 
a well water where you can be collecting water from to uh, help your fish grow your fish if you're into fish farming and so on so these are assets so what is required here is for you to click you that just click add click add and when you click add you see the asset list will come out this is the asset list this is what you will see you have the name of asset the purchase price how much did you buy it year of purchase when did you buy it which year their life span how long will it stay even if it is a house you know a house houses they have lifespan too if you built a house today that house has a lifespan that it will stay so here again the line type you click on it and select the light type and the asset value so how much is the value currently so you have to put it there because it's likely maybe you have have a house that you inherited from your parents or your grandparents and that house was built about 50 or 60 years ago so definitely the asset value will be different from when it was built at that time so once you enter this you click save when you are done but you can always come back and add more assets so you add more add more until when you are done you click save each one you are done you click save and you move on now you take sort of the tenth one which is the management and staff now what is it that is required from us or the management and staff let's look at this point because you always see this on each page when you click it said function uh state and describe state and describe the function you need to perform to run the business so you have production or inventory management admin faculty management human resource finance accounts there you have marketing sales and all that their qualification or expertise then here the role or responsibility you hold in the business so these details are required of the management and at the staff so here is an example of what this person has presented you see the person have already entered it's all line type employee line type employee, employee full name it provided the name responsible manager secretary security if you don't have it's not compulsory you're going to put in everything fill in only those things that you know you really need in the business and remember you have a certain sum you have applied for so to do this just click on add look at this button here you click on it once you click on add it gives it gives you opportunity to fill in all the necessary information you need to provide and that takes us to a uh, financial plan financial plan is a, a bit detailed and with the financial plan you need to be very careful not to make mistake in this area you have the financial model that have been provided here and is divided into section about four or five sections in the financial plan so we're going to start with the section a of the financial model so it says use the tool to create I always read here where you have issues and that gives us the 11 or 14 step the financial plan is 11 or 14 so in this case what do we need to do you go straight in here and create your financial plan so this is the section a general information on that general information you provide your, your document title uh says select your uh, business uh, country business currency so you have to use your business currency don't use dollar instead of naira and list the names or description of your business offering below also impute the applic uh, applicable tax interest and inflation rate all these are required here so your document title you put it here as your business uh, name the entrepreneur name your name here you put it here your company's name you put it you no know, you always register your business that's your business title your document title that document given to you by uh, where you did your business registration you put it here now you discover that here you will not be required to fill in anything here because it is blocked for you already so you put in your company's name when that is done you continue you have product service uh business product and services so this person filling chicken your own may not be chicken it has product one has product two your product might be different depending on what you are going into and it has product three product service three so on your own here what depends on what you have filled what you are going into and you can always get guidance on that now you have the company tax rate we have five percent 
bank interest rate 5%. This is peculiar to NISA. Then inflation rates, you always, it's always good for you to change the current inflation rate because inflation rate sometimes is not stable. So check current inflation rate. But these ones, we can still leave them because the tax rate, well, still check, depend on the business you are going into. Then, but the bank rate, 5% is correct for now. Uh, you check the rate of NISA and that is what you put in here. Now, we come to the depreciation rates. You know, when you're talking about depreciation, you're talking about assets. After a use over a while, you discover that the value will be decreasing. The value attached to that particular asset will be decreasing, and that takes all to depreciation. We need to know the rate at which that will depreciate. Like I said a while ago, that you have a house, and that house has a lifespan. So if the house is valued to last for 100 years, for example, it means at the end of each year, there will be depression. Or the house is scheduled to last for 60 years. It means at the end of each year, there is depreciation. So if you built a house today and you want to sell the house in another 10 years, there is no way you will sell it in the same amount you built it because depreciation would have set in. The same thing goes with our cars. You have depreciation. So in this regard, you will have to uh, get how you get the machinery, the depreciation calculated. You have depreciation for building, furniture, machinery, and equipment, vehicle, and installations. All these things, they depreciate over time. Now, what is depreciation? It could be defined as the monetary decreases in a company's assets. A continuous usage of asset leads to decrease in the value of that asset. So to determine value that is lost, you need to calculate the depreciation rate. Because like I said, it will not remain in the same way. So there are different methods. There are four methods precisely you use in calculating depreciation rates. You have the straight line, depreciation, declining balance, sum of the year, DG, the unit of production. But for the purpose of this training, we'll just look at only the first one, which is uh, the straight line depreciation. This is the common and simplest to use. Estimate an asset useful in useful life at the salvage period at the end of it. So you look at, okay, if, for example, I have bought this, my photocopy machine, for example, and this photocopy machine, it has been emanated that is going to last for 15 years. So you look at the 15 years, and again, you now have to look at the cost of buying it in day one. And after 15 years, how much will it worth? So you subtract it and you divide it by the lifetime of 15 years. So that is the formula for calculating it. So you have the cost of assets, that is the cost of asset minus the salvage value. The amount you bought it for the first day minus the amount it will now worth when the, uh, the lifespan would have expired. Now you subtract it and divide by the number of years that has been estimated that it will last. And that will give you the depreciation uh, value. Now, when you go walk through that, you are going to see this other form of sections. You're going to see section B, growth rate. If you click on each of them, it will give you a drop down menu on a click on each of them. So you have growth rate, you have startup cost, that is C, D, you have human resource, operating cost, revenue, the working capital. So let's just continue with them. Now, this is the growth rate, that is the section B. On that here, say enter the expected yearly growth rates for your business below. You can use the growth rate to demonstrate projected expansion plan for your business. While in this case, when you are entering this, you will not see all these figures 10, 10, 20, 20. No. It's the one that I picked from that I use this as an example. See somebody says work. Now what you're going to do is where you have the because you are fielding your product, remember where in the initial ones you have had a place where you feel so automatically the product items are going to appear. There you have the unit. So what you're going to be clicking is to click on edit. If you click on edit, it will now give you opportunity to fill in all this. So if you click on edit, it's give, going to give you something like this. You have it here. Here you have forecast years. So we're having 10 years of forecast. 
and we are looking at the forecast value. And here we want to calculate product one sales volume. So we're going to forecast, you have year one, year two, year three, year four. Now how do you forecast that in 10 years, what will be the volume of your sales? Now to do this, again, I will advise before you get into this point, you must go and do a market survey. You must go and find out because if you are starting, you have not been into the business, you need to find out how much it actually costs for what you want to do. And remember, you have your direct competitors. Find out from those direct competitors. Go online, search through what you can. You can go out, carry out a little survey and get what you needed. But if you're already doing it, it is better for you to sit down calculate how much or the volume of sales you've had over a period of time. Let's say if now we are looking at year one, year two, year three. So how many years, how long have you done it? Maybe you have done it for a period of two, three years. So bring it out, calculate it. That will give you a good way of focus. And there are ways, this method, we're going to use it in this session or true because you're going to forecast everything sales you will forecast, the prices you're going to forecast. So when you are dealing with forecast, ensure that you have the right information. Don't just fill in anything. Filling in anything may not give you, uh, may not give you a clearance that you need to get this loan because these are the criteria that are going to be used. When all these things are generated on a click, they are going to see how your business will go. So if your business is not going to move well, definitely they won't approve your uh, loan. So when you are done, you click apply changes and you move on. So here we're going to look quickly how to use Excel on how to use your Excel for focus. Like I said, there are two types of focus here. We have what we call straight line focus and seasonality. Straight line focus is a linear focus. For example, you have increment, you have your prices this year to are selling for five naira. Ne next year you want to increase it to ten naira. You have to so it's continuous, continuous increase. But in the reality of it, when we are working in the practical sense of it, you discover that we work more with seasonality, either within a period, within a yearly, or something else. So in this case, we're going to look at how we can achieve this using Excel work sheets i'm taking this for example from what we've just done here we have the forecast years so we are starting from 2022 so let us you right now i'm the one applying for this loan and i want to start from this year 2022 and i'm looking through to year 2031 and right here i have done my survey because i have not been into this business and i discovered that well for this kind of product i am into I will be able to have a forecast volume of sales of 200 uh, for this year. Maybe next, ah, there might likely going to be a drop because that next year you're going to have some campaign. You're going to do ah, some things might affect sales. So we might not sell up to that. Okay, we'll put it this way. Then, or maybe again, I've looked at those that have started business and I drew from their experiences and I discovered that for the first year, it's always better than the second year because when they are starting, you know, the money is there and the rest of them, but the volume kind of drop for one reason or the other, I put it there. Or if I have been into this business, I can now use my trace of what I've been having because that's why it's good to keep record. Go to your record, find out how much have you, how many, what is your sales volume for each of the years. So let's assume we have, we are able to have up to uh three or so years we put them there so once this is done you have entered it in your excel you can you have three uh column you have column a column b and right here what will i do after i have done that i will just select this i select my year of forecast and to this level and i will come in here click on my data for you to be able to do this you must be using current um, Excel, maybe from uh, 2016 upwards, because if not, you will need to go and be entering some syntax for you to generate this. 
So I just come in here, look at my forecast sheet. I click on my forecast sheet and look at what is given to me because this area is what is already describing what is required. But however, I can decide forecast ends. Is ending 2025. Do I want it to end 2025? No, it has to end 2031. So I will just come here. I increase my forecast years. It's going to 2031. Great. That is where I want it to end. I will come here, click on this. Let me move this up a little. Then I want to enter something. So look at it's asking me. Focus starts when 2024. I can decide to say no. I want focus to start 2025. It's not. Is it moving? No. Okay, 2024. It's okay. Now 95% interval uh what else again do i need now uh stars and 31 okay i think everything here is okay by me we have an uh, interpolation then the average if i say create let's see what happens definitely it will create it in so all this line is giving you the forecast uh, boundaries this is the area of the focus that will really go into and here, these are the lower boundary, the upper boundary. So between these two regions, it's telling us that your price range will fall into. So it has opened a different. Let me move this up a little. Uh, I want to move it away. So if we come in here, you'll discover that from 2025, this will be the sales volume. I can as well also just turn this, remove all the I highlight right click and format go to my numbers i can remove it just make it number remove all the decimals so that it will be a round figure fine so this is it i can do the others the same way through okay let me just do everything together the same way i want to remove i want to remove uh, the decimals i uh, format I have my numbers, remove the decimal, making it a round figure. Great. So you discover that this will be the forecast. It means in 2031, they are likely to have 940. This is the lower limit. This is the upper limit. Now, in this area, sorry, the lower limit 685, the upper limit is this. So this will not be my sales volume. So you see that 940 is between this. So for each year, this water. So if I am to fill now, I would have been able to fill this into it. So this is how you can achieve when you are doing forecasting. Because as there is really good for you to do forecasting, it's not a very strenuous one for now. So others that you require will be this. We are going to fill in all this. Like I have mentioned earlier, before now, you discover that all these spaces, look at it. This is how you will see them empty. These spaces are going to be empty. All these ones are filled in by the person who worked on it because I picked it from the system. So, but what you're going to see will just be in this realm. Like right here now, all I said, product one, says volume revenue. You will click on edit and a dialog box will open for you to walk through. You come to product price, price revenue. And when you are doing this, everything here is on forecast. Because remember, what you are doing, you don't have everything on ground, especially if you are a startup. But if you've been working too, you're going to forecast yourself. You'll be doing into business. Look at the price revenue, the sales volume, the price revenue, the sale for product three, and the utility, the marketing and advertising. How much are you going to spend on it? The administrative cost, the maintenance cost. So you must be able to estimate. And to do this, don't just write it off like that and say oh just guess what no it is always good to carry out a little bit of uh research go out there to find out what is obtainable you can even sit in your room get your internet and do some work on the internet to find out what is obtainable before you start putting in some amount now session c is a startup cost 
under Section C for the startup or enter the course you expect to incur. Because this is the startup you want to start. So maybe land, how much? Then building, furniture. But remember what I said about equipment. Equipment is 70%. If whatever amount you are requesting for, 70% of it should go to equipment. Now you can walk around the others. Like vehicle, usually they are not being considered for that. So share what you are applying for between your equipment and the working capital. You can take part of the working capital and share it into, okay, maybe furniture and fitties, which will not really be more the opening uh, inventory and initial working capital. Here underneath, you have a glossary telling you what to do and what to provide if need be. So your contingency is 10%. Contingency, sometimes there are some things you may not have remembered to even mention and that will crop up. Or you didn't you did expect them, but they'll just come up like that. So you have to set 10% aside for contingencies. Now, you have Section D, Human Resource. Under Human Resource, remember, you're going to pay for labor, and it depends on your kind of business. So even if you're going to be hiring daily labor, you still need to plan for them. So here, you have to provide who are those. You Remember, you have filled something somewhere. So here you're going to be editing now and be uh, forecasting, putting the amount you want, you're going to give to them as salary. All this one that is 000 is not. These are just, so you have to click and you put in each one. The business development manager, how much. And if you don't have it, you don't need to fill it. Just let it be. Let it go. Now, operating cost. This is your daily cost. How much you're going to be spending on every time for the work to flow. Filling the following data for your business. Know that not all fields may be relevant for your business. So fill as required. So it is so clear. Not all fields. You have direct costs. You have indirect costs. You have fixed costs. Now we are looking at the direct cost. The cost that will really impact on the product or service. Raw material, for example, if you are into production of what now, maybe you make um, pap. Now, your direct cost will come from the corn, the maize, the grains you're going to be using. Then the direct label, direct factory overhead. These are things that we impact directly on the product or the service you're going to render. Then the next one will be the fixed cost. The fixed costs are costs that you are going to be incurring from time to time and that might not really change. For example, if you're going to be paying for salaries, wages, maybe somebody is going to be helping you from time to time to clear uh, the pool of water that you are using and keeping your fishes, you're going to pay for it. Then marketing and advertising, there might be some fixed costs because even in these other uh, houses, maybe radio houses, television houses, they have some fixed costs they pay and they don't change it often, that is safe for a while. So that would be a fixed cost for you, that you maintain a transport. You have a cost of transporting your goods. These are fixed costs that you apply in your business. You just put them in there. Now you have revenue. Here again, so fill the following data for your business. Know that not all fields may be relevant. Please, the ones that are not relevant, don't fill it. Here we have product one revenue this area now the product you have filled in they are the ones that are not coming up and it's telling you okay how much are you going to spend on this how much are you going to generate on this so right here we are looking at the revenue that is going to come up from this product one so base monthly sales what is it how much how many uh what is the volume of sales you're going to have then base uh product service price you put it there the seasonality forecast. Yearly, we're now going to have a forecast again. So what do you do? You just click on edit, and we are still following the forecasting method. That the simple forecasting method. Use Excel. It will really help you. And if you don't know how to do it, that is why the EDI is here. Consult the EDI. Don't miss the class. Don't miss the training. Be there, and it will guide you to ask your questions. So you click on it and you move on. So the next one is the working capital. 
So the working capital, this you need from time to time, from day to day. So receivable days, you put it there. Payable days, put it there. Your inventory days, you put it there. When you are done, this is the end of your financial plan. You click Save Financial Plan. And that ends the financial plan model. So what is next is the sales and marketing. Remember, you're going to sell, you're going to market. So there's still a space for you now. You're going to provide your sales and marketing model. You're going to fill means of identification, the trade association you belong, if you belong there, why we customers uh, prefer you to others. These are marketing strategies. And again here, look through. You're going to look at some places that have red marks here. You have some stars on red. Those stars on red means it must be provided. You must complete them. Enter the average number of days required for your business to sell one batch of inventory because you must be able to provide all these. Then price increase percentage. How, how often do you want to increase? What is the price increase you're going to? Don't just sit there and say, oh, I will not even, no, after this, I will just put 5% or 10%. No, you have to be procedural. Do your marketing. Research. Find out what is obtainable out there, especially if you are new in the business. When you are done, click save and move on. Now, the 13th one is preview business plan. So when you click on preview business plan, it's going to give you everything you have done on the business plan. It will show you the whole platform. Then from there, you are now able to go through and see if what you have done is in order or not. So here you can click on preview. You can uh, preview your business plan. You can preview your financial model because there are some points where you are working, you need to go back to your financial model to check what you have there so that we enable you to calculate because what you are feeling must correspond with your financial model in the aspect of finance. And the same thing comes here, you can download. So once that is done, you now go to step four. So we are done with step three, which is the uh, which is uh, the uh, the blink plan. The blink, blink plan takes care of the business plan. So right here now, we are now in step four, which is uh, on the loan application, which is the guarantor's validation. So remember, you're going to provide guarantor that will guarantee your loan that you are applying for in case there is a default, I think the guarantor will be held responsible as well. So your guarantor is going to provide the BVN number here, the phone number, email address, surname, first name, and middle name that you validate the guarantor's uh, BVN. So once that is done, the next will be the assessment test. In the assessment test, there are just some multiple choice kind of tests that will be given to you. And the multiple choice kind of test will be tests that will go around their financial, uh, the basic financial things around NISA, CBN. So you just read things about them. I don't really have details about what they're going to ask you, but they might just be simple questions. So I advise is that you have to understand what NISA is doing, get used to the acronyms that are being used. For example, it say NISA. What is the full meaning of NISA? You'll be able to say, what is the full meaning of CBN? You'll be able to say it. And uh, there will be alternative quite okay that you need to choose from. But you need to, so it's a simple test. So after taking that test, that takes you to the last uh, step, step six loan application for you to submit your business plan. So when you click submit your business plan, now it takes you to this environment where you now have to uh, check all that you have done. So in this case, it's, you can now view your status on the dashboard because when you click on your business plan, you'll be able to see your status here. Click on status here and it gives you this environment. So from here, you are able to see your agreements application progress. So it gives you a progress like this person. You could see there is a progress here that is showing about 40 something that is still in the progress, it has not completed it. So from time to time, you can even go to the agreements uh, portal and you are able to view your progress. I think with this, if you walk it through, take out time, you'll be good to go. Thank you for listening.